Justin Phillips from Auto Appraise, autoappraise.com, 800-301-3886. Doing a pre-purchase inspection today for an out-of-state buyer, 1980 Mercedes SL450 Coupe. It's a beautiful color, Inca Red. I don't know who picked the name for Inca Red, but it uh, isn't really what you consider red would look like. But it's a very nice color that complements the chocolate brown leather interior. The car is represented as a one owner car sporting 32,900 and some miles. The body's in very nice shape. There's been a little bit of a repaint work here and there. Some original paintwork likely exists. I got the hood up. Let's go ahead and uh, and start here. Original trim tag is in place. The car was built according to the um, data tag in the door jam, January of 1980. It was in 1980. I think they went from a three-speed automatic to a four-speed automatic. This car appears to have a three-speed automatic in it. Early production, 1980. So I'm not savvy on exactly what year those things changed. Underhood presentation is very stock and original, nothing too um, exciting to speak about. Don't see any real major issues. Fired the car up to pull it up on the ramps and uh, seems to run good so far. We're going to take it out for a test drive. The oil is very clean. Just a little bit of skosh on the low side. Antifreeze uh, is cleaning up to par. Um, no real obvious issues seen in the upper tie bar core support area. Didn't see any um, collision issues or damage down low on the forward frame rails. There's some paint peel there where some, somebody probably got after it with a power washer. Hood liner is in nice shape, and based on how often these things fall down, I'll bet that's been replaced. The chrome grill shows nicely. Got some handprints on it, but they'll they'll clean up. I think that's good for the era and the year. <clears throat> Headlight lenses and parking lamp lenses are in good shape. Small touched up chip right there. There's a little bit of contamination bubbling in some various locations, a little spot right there and a little spot above the headlight if you can see it. There's a few spots and it, it's going to look worse under this fluorescent light than it is out in the daylight. So that's why I left it inside so the prospective buyer who I'm talking to right now, he'll be the only one to receive this video and uh, go through the condition of this car and decide if he's going to purchase it or not. And uh, if he doesn't buy it, then the video will go public on my channel just so that you can kind of see what we do. Got a little bit of lacquer checking <clears throat> in the paint on this cowl panel. And when this hood was either re-cleared or repainted, I'm unclear which might have been done. There was a little bit of uh, shrinkage in a couple spots. Nothing too disturbing. A little bit of contamination here and there, but no real major signs of overspray. Um, reflective quality is really, really nice. This inner bumper molding uh, was not removed before some uh, repaint work was done. A few little spots like that that would indicate some repaint work. Driver's side of the car uh, looks very nice. There's a little bit of cracking right in here on the paint. You can see that, and a little bit of bubbling right here at the quarter panel lip. Uh, the digital paint meter had pretty good readings throughout the car. The owner, the buyer of this vehicle is going to get about 50 still photos of various readings. And to help explain this, um, a digital paint meter measures the mill thickness or the thickness of paint off the metal. Here's the oil I checked, but if we take a spot and test it, 
and we get 17.5 and then I lift the meter up and put paper underneath it, I get 21.5. So the thickness of paper is four mils and uh, it's not very much. So factory coverage can range anywhere from five to 10 on a lot of vehicles, 15, 13, you get the idea, 13.5. No real 10, no real crazy readings anywhere on the vehicle. And again, still photos can be viewed. I measured our bumper distance here to here. Openings look nice and square. And again, no evidence of collision damage could be found. Well, the color match on the car is pretty nice, especially under here, in here under the fluorescent lights. Coming around the back, you can kind of see a slight tint difference in the deck lid compared to the border panels. You can see this deck lid has just a slighter shade, um, darker reflective quality, but it looks pretty nice. All this trim was removed, assumably when this deck lid was replaced or repainted. And uh, trim and lenses, all in nice shape. Uh, bumper measurements are good. Some real light polishing scratches in these the finish on these aluminum bumpers. End caps are in good shape. Bumper extensions are in good shape. Chrome tips in good shape. This rubber bumper extension is heat shrunken a little bit. Could stand to be rolled around there, but nothing too disturbing. Wheels are in really nice shape and the doors open and close just with very little effort. Carpeting is very clean aftermarket speakers installed. Um, I think I'm done talking about the paint in the body. Am I done? Yeah, I think I'm done. Jams are all original. It's an original finish in there. Maybe a little touch-up has occurred. Door corners are solid and the doors close nice. Jams have the proper stickers and decals in place. Leather uh, seat hides are in very nice shape. The entrance wear is minimal, uh, helping support the low mileage claim. Hand sweat on the steering wheel uh, is minimal. Armrest sweat and wear on the pad, wear on these mats is pretty minimal. Wear on the pedals, minimal. Nothing to get too excited about. Dash pads in nice shape, not Cracked gauge faces and lenses look nice. Aftermarket stereo has been installed. Uh, we'll get the car out and drive it here shortly. You can see some cracking. That's real common place to see in the Mercedes. Some kind of cracking in the laminate on top of the uh, console. So nothing really ill to report. We've got some sagging in this sun visor material. So we've gone through the underhood. Let's take a peek at the trunk and then we'll go underneath the body and go over some of the common areas on the car that sometimes are prone to wear and or decay. The um, trunk skin lip is in really nice shape. Jams are in good shape. Spot welds easily visible. No apparent repairs on the frame rails. Original first aid kit. That is not original. Um, and hidden under here is a amplifier for the stereo. The carpets are coming unglued needs to be affixed up here. This could be re-glued, but I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but down inside, we're, we're in good shape. And there's a, there's a spare down here below. I guess I'll lift it up quick and show you. There it is. Looks like an older one. Doors, hood, and deck lid all open, close, and latch as they should. All right. Tires are in great shape. No dry cracking noted. Plenty of tread. Tool 565R15s. Wheel finishes in great shape. We'll get under it and then go through the mechanics of it. As far as the trim goes, all of the trim is original and there's really nothing to uh, complain about for the age and miles of the car. It's all very light general wear, uh, nothing specifically wrong with any of the components. They could use 
a little bit of polishing and whatnot, but it's all complete. Those are mostly handprints that could be cleaned up. Uh, lower valance is in nice shape. I mentioned that the grill is in nice shape. Fogs are in nice shape. Uh, control arms don't appear to have any rips, tears, or elongations. Suspension is fairly original in spots, although the tie rod ends uh, and uh, sleeves have been changed out. Uh, front main seal does not look like it's leaking. The frame rail structure here is nice and straight, no tears in those die holes. That is the uh, right, here is the left. Let me give you a better view the same way symmetrically. A little bit of seepage above here. I didn't see what it was from, but nothing actively leaking on the ground. So we'll have to maybe come back to that. A little bit of dampness on the oil pan, and uh, that is likely based on being back in this area, probably a drip from the rear main seal. And uh, I've been here for at least two and a half hours, so nothing on the carpet that's showing up in any mass amount. Of course, this carpet's been here a long time. Our brakes appear to be in good shape. Nothing appears to be new there. And original cran marks, again, another supporter of low miles. Tie rod ends look like they're in nice shape and look like they've been serviced. Over here, we've got some more recent, fresher parts. Uh, going back into the uh, floor splash area, um, original sound deadener and undercoating is kind of peeling. You'll see a little uh, dimpleage on the depression on the uh, frame rails from where the car has been lifted on a hoist and uh, some hoist wear uh, opposite of each other left and right. There's a little bit of deterioration and decay in the splash area of this wheel well. Um, that's some rust that might need to be tended to or at least uh, sealed up. And I think there's a little bit right there coming through. So there is a little deterioration um, on the rockers. Coming back, take a look at this closer. And uh, that's what we have there, some repair work is in order. Uh, some mud and splash got in there and then it ventilated itself out the bottom. So a little decay down there, which is not uncommon for these cars, first place uh, to look. So that's a replacement repairable panel. A pinch weld comes all along here and uh, there's not too much splaying or separation. Let's go down and take a look, because usually in the rear end, back by the rear tires, we can have the same condition. And again, uh, we do. There's a little bit of uh, rust and splaying of that, uh, that pinch weld. So again, this panel could be split and replaced. That could be cleaned up, which is really what I see as far as a uh, any abnormal or unusual, oops, I'm not pointing at the right spot, decay in the car, that would be it. So the other spot looks the same. The other side is basically has some similar um, uh, condition of rust down in the sills. A little bit of contamination right there and a little bit right there uh, that was uh, done in some repair and some repaint work. So this bumper doesn't look bad when you're looking down on it, but down here it's got a little warp to it. could be straightened out. But the reflective quality, if you can see me there, is uh, it's nice, it's presentable. We'll get it out and take it for a ride. Again, that area right there, same thing. The last guy that did rocker panels 
on one of these, don't quote me exactly, but I think parts and labor, and because this doesn't have to be painted body finish color, it's textured black, I think he was around uh, 1800 to two grand for the repair. I pull that molding off and they do it. So that is uh, that complete piece would get, exterior component would get replaced and then repainted. A quick look on the passenger side. Um, nothing really different side to side to report. Maybe slightly less wear on this side just because it didn't get used as much. Small chip here where the top clips on and uh, the general wear is pretty minor where the top kind of goes around here. Noted a little bit of uh, a little bit of overspray right here on this molding that could be cleaned up right along the edge. Other than that, I think most of the trim may have been taken off the vehicle. A Pilkington a windshield unit, it's got one stone chip up high. It's out of the driver's vision path, but it's up on the driver's side. It might have a couple other little stone pecks or sand pecks, nothing too major that I saw. Prospective buyer is going to get over two, possibly 300 photos. I didn't count what I shot, but I always shoot about that many. I can't pause this video, so we're going to just keep rolling. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise doing the test drive portion of a pre-purchase inspection on a 1980 Mercedes 450. SL 107, I believe the wheelbase, 45 pounds of cold oil pressure, gas gauge is operating, temps down, it's uh, stone cold, it's been in here for a few hours, we've got a clock, actually we got air conditioning blowing and uh, working. Three-speed transmission, note that. Thank you. Want to back into any cars here. Down in Detroit, Michigan today. All right, I'm going cruising. I'll be back. Right. See you tomorrow. All right. Radio.ca. Okay, that's enough of that. consignment car at a consignment dealer in Detroit and we're not supposed to take them out of the parking lot but they've been pretty gracious with me so far haven't gotten in too much trouble stop here. Turn signals are canceling both ways, by the way. Hands 
hands off the wheel right now, stopping, and the car stops nice and straight. Got something rolling around in the uh, door pocket there. But the engine's got plenty of acceleration. Fifty was a step up from that 380. That engine, I think the 380, I believe, was used for about four years. And we eventually got up to the 560. I'll turn it around and we'll do one more jaunt. The temperature starting to come up. That's good. Car is equipped with an O2 sensor. That was a new thing, I believe, for 1980 Mercedes. At least on the US versions. I'm gonna jam the brakes on right now. Eh, I can't really jam them on in a curve. Let's try it up here. Brake pedal feels uh, good. There we go again. Got a little bit of a draw to the right. It's like the right front uh, draw to the right front. The steering feels uh, nice and tight. Four corners uh, very well. These are always fun cars to drive. I like it. It's a good running car. It's nice and quiet. The exhaust uh, looks, you know, older. I don't know if it's completely original or not. There might have been some service replacement parts in it over the years, but certainly quiet. I'll run through some of the functional checks uh, when I return, including the headlights, tail lights. I won't bore you with those on tape uh, because you've seen turn signal flash before. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. Actually, let me hit that bump a little harder and just see if we got unusual rattles. There was a little bit of oil seepage as I pointed out um, on the uh, not bad, not bad. oil seepage I pointed out on the um, rear main pan seal not uncommon and a little bit of seepage back on the uh, rear end housing. I don't hear any unusual whine or noise coming from the back end of the car. No howling, that's good. And uh, good acceleration. I'm, uh, I'm squeaking here in the back. My, it's my... I have to move that seat up and maybe that'll quit. I can figure it out. Uh, the seat feels pretty comfortable. One of the things in these Mercedes is sometimes the, uh, the bottom cushion breaks down and you feel like you're leaning to the left. And uh, this seat feels pretty comfortable to me. I don't feel like I'm sitting unbalanced. That's nice. Uh, the burl wood or faux burl wood or what that might be on the steering wheel and on the shifter is in really nice shape. I don't know what the books and records are on the vehicle. I know that the advertisement indicated that it was the original owner's car consigned here, so uh, it looks like it's been kept in pretty good service that I can see. Get it over here in the shade and we'll walk around it one more time.
thruster is operating by level. All that seems to be working just fine. Uh, wipers. Delay. First position, second position. Let's get our lights on. Oil pressure is still between 30 and 45. Temp's coming up. About 180. I'm going to let it idle for a few minutes before I pull it back in the building. I said I wasn't going to bore you with lights, but uh, here they are anyway. Hey, thanks for riding along. Um, overall, we've got a pretty good looking Mercedes 450, not a 560. Because it was 380s and 450s and that, uh, in that era. It's a good looking car. Uh, it's generally solid to speak of except for the areas that I pointed out in the uh, outer, that outer uh, rocker panel, left and right, and in that uh, splash area. If that is not a concern for you, then it might be a worthy car of your consideration. If it is, might want to look for something else, but a lot of these Mercedes have rust in that location, so uh, you might want a different kind of convertible. Okay, so a few small contaminations and uh, flaws and general uh, issues in the paint, but nothing uh, too distracting, you know, nothing horrible. Engine doesn't appear to be smoking. We'll take a peek at that oil area one more time. You can see a little seepage off the rear end uh, getting onto that uh, exhaust pipe right there. That probably could be tended to. Uh, power wash clean down and see where the leak is and maybe put a gasket in it. But the back side of the car seems to be in pretty good shape. Well sounded like all these Mercedes are. Uh, no obvious uh, frame or suspension damage noted. If I want to keep this video under half a minute, I better hurry up. Engine sounds good. Got no major leaks of any sort that I can see. Suspension feels good, brakes feel good with a little bit of a pull. Wiper sweep, the air conditioning works, the stereo works. I will uh, I will check the top momentarily, but will not put that on video, only in still photos for the prospective buyer. Glass all rolls up and works as designed. And I don't know if there's a hard top with it. I forgot to ask that question before I took it on a test drive. There may or may not be. That answer will be uh, revealed and then passed on to the prospective buyer. Again, thanks for uh, riding and hanging out. Have a great day. If you're watching this video publicly, the guy either bought the car or it's for sale. Thanks a bunch.